Now, for the last three weeks, I've been using this as my main laptop. Yes, this is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro, all new here for 2021. And I gotta say, super impressed with the performance of the Ryzen 5 5600H. Love the all metal build, love the 2K display. So does it all come together? Does it give you good battery life? How's the performance? We're gonna check it out now in this review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure that I'm not being compensated by Lenovo. The only opinions you're about to hear are my own, and Lenovo is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time just like you. Now, please keep in mind this is a pre-production unit, and the retail shipping units may vary to some degree. Now, my confidential source tells me that this is going to be released sometime in June with a starting price of 999 euros expected in Europe, Asia Pacific and China. Whether or not there'll be other areas that this is going to be released in, that remains to be seen. Fingers crossed that this will come to the US. I'm hoping it does. My source also tells me that there will be a variant with an OLED display and one that has a discrete GPU, the MX450 to be specific. Now this is a really nice all metal design which comes in at 3.2 pounds or 1.45 kilograms. Definitely portable to take with you on the go. Definitely thin and light. I like to see that. It does come in a slate gray color or it comes in the light silver. I actually have the slate gray. And for those wondering, you can't quite open the lid with one finger. Nonetheless, the hinge is very sturdy, very strong, and I think it'll hold up over time. So far, it's looking good. Now, as far as the keyboard is concerned, we get those familiar smile-shaped keys we know with the yoga line. Very comfortable to type on, although it is a bit shallow in terms of the key travel, but it does have pretty decent tactile feedback. It also has a multi-stage backlight that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Now, the precision touchpad is very responsive to finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the gestures work as advertised as far as ports are concerned on the left side you get two usb type c ports they're full function ports meaning you get usb 3.2 gen 2 power delivery 3.0 and display port 1.4 on the right side, you get a 3.5 millimeter audio combo jack and a USB 3.2 type A port. Of note, there's no micro SD card slot and there's no HDMI port. That's something to keep in mind. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that there's no Thunderbolt 4 support. There is no deal between Intel, which owns the intellectual property of Thunderbolt and AMD, which makes the Ryzen processors. And therefore, you don't get it on this laptop. And I'm not gonna lie, I would have liked to have seen USB 4 over 3.2. Nonetheless, I had no problems connecting to 4K monitors with this, and that has been pretty good. So all the connections are there, data, charge, display out. Now I opened this laptop up in my unboxing video, but for those that didn't see it, it's super easy. All you need to do is remove the T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Once inside, you'll notice that it has dual fans for cooling. We'll get into that in a little bit. It also has a 61 watt hour battery. Battery life was very good on this laptop. We'll get into that in just a moment as well. And as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable, which I like to see, and you do get some very good reads and writes, as you can see from the results. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that as a user. And it has LPDDR4X RAM. My unit has 16 gigabytes of dual channel RAM. Now, I'm also glad to see that the Wi-Fi card is socketed in. That means you can upgrade it later on. And it is good to see a Wi-Fi 6 card here all working well, along with Bluetooth 5.0. Now, one of my biggest complaints in the past was we weren't getting these Ryzen processors paired with some high-end laptops with some premium displays. That's not the case here anymore. We have a really nice 2.8K display here. It's a 14-inch display, 2880 by 1800. That means this is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, an IPS display. It's somewhat glossy, but not too bad. You will notice some reflections and glare when you're in direct sunlight, or if you directly shine a light on it, of course, you will see those reflections. 
And what I noticed is it has some really deep black, some really good white points, excellent contrast, and it has a very low Delta E score of 0.92. What does that mean? This is an extremely color accurate display. So if you're doing any kind of video editing, you're going to love it. And speaking of video editing and the like, it does cover the color gamut extremely well. 100% sRGB, 79% Adobe RGB, 81% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 73% NTSC, making this a very very good choice for content creators to do things like Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And it's a very bright display coming in at 389 nits, making it a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. Now this display has a 90 hertz refresh rate. That means you're going to get a better gaming experience, a much smoother experience with less drop frames, and it'll look fantastic, a much smoother scrolling experience as well. But of course, that comes at a price. Your battery life will take a hit because running it at a higher refresh rate will use more power. But you do have the option to set it down back to 60 hertz in the display settings for better battery life. And speaking of battery life, it did 11 hours and 33 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. And that's thanks to that 61 watt hour battery. That's good. And they love the fact that they give you a 95 watt USB-C power adapter, which also supports rapid charge boost, giving you about a two hour charge in just about 15 minutes. A full charge takes a little bit over an hour and a half, and that's really fast, and that's really good. Now, as far as the camera is concerned, you got to keep in mind this is a pre-production unit. And from what I understand, this may get a better update in terms of the quality when the retail shipping units are shipped out. But right now, I'm not really impressed, of course, with this potato cam. It's really not that very good, but it will be adequate enough to do Skype and Zoom if you have to use it in a pinch. Again, not our shipping unit, so keep that in mind. We'll see what the final result is when they do ship those retail units. Let me know how it sounds in terms of doing your Zoom calls, Skype calls, and whatever video conferencing you need you may have if you're working from home and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, again, let me know in that comments section below. Now, this is an infrared camera. That means you can log in with Windows Hello in terms of face recognition, but there is no fingerprint scanner, so keep that in mind. But it worked really well, registering my face pretty much every time I used it. So that was good on that front. Now, this has been my first chance to check out the AMD Ryzen 5 5600H, a new processor here for 2021 from AMD and super impressed with it. Now, it will also be available in a Ryzen 7 and a Ryzen 9 variant as well. That's good to hear. But with this Ryzen 5 5600H, PC Mark 10, which is a good indicator of everyday use, very good score, very good scores on the single core, multi-core score of the Geekbench 5 test. It also did well on the Cinebench R20, Cinebench R20. 15 it did well in terms of graphics so really super impressed and here it is next to the hp nv14 i did a head-to-head -head of these i'll put the link in the description below but as you can see this ryzen 5 5600h which is an entry level one for this product held its own with the core i7 1165 g7 in the hp nv14 which also sported an nvidia gtx 1650 ti with max q discrete gpu and as you can see impressive numbers holding its own and here's how it did on the 3D Mark Time Spy score and the Fire Strike score as well. Everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing all worked well. Very impressive performance even for a Ryzen 5. Can't wait to see what a Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 9 have to offer. And you can definitely game on the Slim 7 Pro as evidenced by the playable frame rate you get with games like GTA 5, Witcher 3, Dota 2, you get the picture. Now they were run on 1080p low settings. Now, the thermals are really good on the Slim 7 Pro, as demonstrated in my head-to-head -head video with the NV14. Check it out again. The link will be in the description below. But when I ran my Prime 95 stress test, it would turbo boost up to 3.29 gigahertz with a core temperature of around 70 degrees, maintaining that temperature for about 15 minutes, maintaining that clock speed. And then after about 15 minutes, it would then drop down to 2.76 gigahertz to maintain a 69 degree core temperature. Overall, the thermals are really good. And what was equally impressive was how quiet the fans were under heavy load. Now, you will notice it, but not loud, not overly obnoxious. And that's really good. 
And while we're inside here, take a look at the two bottom facing speakers, the Dolby Atmos optimized stereo speakers, and they get pretty loud, a little bit of bass, it could have used a little bit more. And I would say they are adequate, nothing special. If you want a more enhanced audio experience, use a good pair of Bluetooth headphones or a really good pair of wired headphones for that matter. All right, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro here for 2021? I absolutely love this laptop. I love its bright, sharp 2.8K display, the 16 to 10 aspect ratio. I love the fact that it runs quiet during heavy load and it maintained good thermals throughout. Expect all day battery life, 11 plus hours, of course, strong performance out of that Ryzen 5 5600H. Give it a backlit keyboard, responsive touchpad, and come in with a sleek design, and you have a winner here. The negatives, of course, there's no webcam shutter, no fingerprint scanner, the RAM is not user upgradable, and there's no SD card or micro SD card for storage expansion. But I think these are not deal breakers by any stretch, ladies and gentlemen. I know that Lenovo now has a winner on their hands, and I can't wait till this is released so the masses can enjoy this wonderful laptop. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Yoga Slim 7 Pro, not yet released. My sources, of course, tell me that it will be coming in June. Now there will be one with an MX450 GPU. There will be an OLED option from what I'm hearing, and that is looking really good so far. A very, very good laptop here. Love the performance out of that Ryzen 5 5600H. Will also be available as a Ryzen 7 and a Ryzen 9. A lot to look forward to here. Uh, very few negatives, as you know, in this laptop. The webcam, this is a pre-production unit, so I'm not really gonna ding them too much on that. Remember, things can change in the retail shipping unit. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.